on here. Hang on. <laughs> My son is like wrapping his head around his blanket right now. But okay. I thought I would get on here and do a little reading update. I did finish From Last Go Love by Allie James last night. I gave it five out of five stars. The most amazing book I've ever read. And I'm going to definitely be picking up more from this author soon. But I also wanted to... So I like my Oreos are over here, so that's where I'm going to go. I also wanted to do like a little library haul at the stuff that I had recently gotten from the library. So I guess I will start off at the top. It's Isabel Ron, Spitfire in Love. It is about, she's never at a loss for words. He's determined to have the last one. There he was with piercing his piercing blue eyes and Lucifer black hair. He was leaning against a wall, a lollipop in his mouth, hot as hell and twice as dangerous. Kara Hawthorne, Hawthorne never backs down, especially when it comes to protecting her family. She looks so soft, harmless, like a pretty kitten, but when she was safe as a ticking time bomb, my sweet spitfire. But she was as safe as a ticking time bomb, my sweet sweet, sweet spitfire. Cameron St. Laurent isn't immediately immediated if I could talk right today that would be great isn't intimidated by the feisty woman at his doorstep and when she asks him for the impossible Cameron knows just how to sweeten the deal the two combustible personalities are faced with the avoided avoidable off the charts chem, off the charts chemistry but when Cam's dark past shows up he'll have to slay his demons and lay himself on a limb to win care body and soul so this sounds like really good. It is only 40, 408 pages, so I don't know if I'm going to read this one yet, because I also have other books that I'm in, so this is another romance. And then I have the Katie Roberts two books. It is the King's novels. It's The Fearless King and The Last King, and they're mostly just like romance about businessmen, and like, I'm going to try and move you guys so that we're not having the light behind the camera so just a second that stuff should be better but these two are just the fearless king and the last king novels they're not really long like i said they're like 400 pages so maybe that'll be easy to read i had picked up a peter swanson novel i read every value break give four out of five stars loved it and this whew, is all the beautiful lies. I don't know anything about it, but I've tended to realize that if I go into like a Peter Swanson book and I go in like blind, I enjoy it more than if I was to read it, the synopsis because I did read the synopsis for before, for before she knew him, and then I went in and it was just kind of it was kind of boring to me. So I'm hoping this one's like a little better but I'm not sure exactly. Clock full of twist turns and just lust, greed, and dishonesty. So I'm hoping this will be as good as every value break. I flew through every value break in like three days, of course with being a mom. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can fly through this one. I have Olivia Hill, Murder in the Isles, a Felicia Swift mystery, I know nothing about this, but the only thing I know is it's a series, and this is the book one. I haven't even started it. It is only, I think, 218 pages? Yeah, 218 pages. So, I don't know. It says if there's anything, or one thing Felicia Swift likes more than sex, it's books. But her dream live... <laughs> But the dream job at the Library of Congress takes a macerade turn when she finds a linguistics specialist lying dead between her feet. Her least favorite subjects, anthropology and astrophysics. Worse than utterly sexy detective seems to have his eyes on Felicia's curves more than the evidence, which she is convinced points at the wrong man, and she plans to convince him of just that right after he buys her an apple martini. So, this kind of seems like a sexy mystery, so maybe 
we'll just see how that goes. I have a graphic novel. It's got like really pretty. Like I think I like the blue with the water the most. It's you brought me to the ocean. You brought me the. Ooh, excuse me. You brought me the ocean. His. It's about a kid named Jake Hyde. His father drowned. Luckily, he lives in Truth or Consequences in New Mexico. So, maybe this will be good. Um, but I don't know. Like, a lot of these I just picked up because of, like, recommendations. And then a couple were only because me and my husband were at the library in our town. So, I decided to pick up some books while we were there. But then I ended up with a whole top shelf full of books. So... I have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I've heard really good things about this one. I watched a YouTube video of a YouTuber. I can't think of her name. But she read this in like 24 hours. And she said that she finished it in like 4 or 5 because it was really that good. And she ended up picking up this sequel, which I can see why she says it's that, that good. <sighs> because it's got like text messages in it. So that it's not just all like this. <laughs> so I'm hoping with the text messages and stuff, it'll be a good read. I don't know when I'm going to start that one. Because of, there's a couple that I do want to start tonight. But I'm probably going to start one of them. Well, I'm already in the middle of Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I am 44 pages. So I mean, this book is only... 384 I believe yeah 384 so I know if I try I can finish this one tonight or at least get like that much of the way through it like a big chunk I'm trying to and then I have Yes No Maybe So by Becky Albertelli and it's Asisha Asia see oh my gosh I am like really yawning today I don't know anything about any of these, so don't quote me on any of them. I just read, like, obviously the synopsis of them. Jamie Goldberg is cool with volunteering for his local state Senate candidate as long as he's behind the scenes when it comes to speaking to strangers or, let's face it, speaking to speaking at all to almost anyone. Jamie's a choke artist. There's no way he'd ever knock on doors to ask people for their votes until he meets Maya. Maya Reimsman having the worst ramadan ever her best friend is too busy to hang out with her her summer trip is canceled and now her parents are separating why her mother thinks the solution to her problems is political canvassing with some awkward dude she hardly knows is beyond her going door to door isn't exactly glamorous but maybe it's not the worst thing in the world after all the polls are getting closer and so are maya and jamie mastering local activism is one thing Navigating the cross-cultural crush of the century is another thing entirely. So, that sounds kind of good. Maybe. And this is... Almost 500 pages. I believe. It's... 436 pages. So, that's like on the longer side of reads. <laughs> and then I have The Push by Ashley Audrian. This I've seen... All over BookTok, all over Instagram, all over YouTube, the book community. So, I don't know anything about this, and I kind of want to keep it that way. There is a couple of these books, like this one, and then another one that I'm going to show you, that I'm going to keep it this way to the where I don't know what it is about, because I heard, if you don't know what this one's about, it's pretty good. So, I don't know if I want to read this one tonight, or do I want to read Home Before Dark, because, like, I'm already in Home Before Dark, but this one's only, like, 307 pages. So I know I read 200 and something last night if I sat and read it while my son's asleep. So I know I can at least get halfway through this one and then finish the rest tomorrow. Which, that's what I plan to do. Because all I know really about this... Is, whew, I can stop yawning. It is about a woman and her daughter, I do believe. I almost looked. But it's a mystery. That's just like all I know. Literally. So, those two, like, I am thinking about doing, like, a little reading vlog just so that I can, like, pick up some of these books and, like, 
or a 24 hour readathon. I haven't decided what I wanted to do with it yet, so I will write down what I'm going to do with it and then we'll discuss that. Plan a video and everything. There is The Shadow Woman by Aki Edwardson? Aki, maybe? It's August and the annual Gothenburg party is in full swing, but this year the Bacchalanian blowout is simmering with an ethnic disorder spurred by negative or nativist gangs when a woman is found murdered in a park. Her identity as inscrutable as the blood, or blood red symbol tagged on the tree above her body. Winter's search for a killer as well as the child the victim has borne leads him from sleek McMansions to the Goldberg Gothenburg Frines, where my northern suburbs is a code for outsider, and the past is inescapable inex even for Sweden's youngest chief inspector. Psychologically gripping and socially astute. So, that kind of sounds pretty good. I don't know how I really feel about the whole history kind of thing. That's how I kind of feel that it's got like some history vibes in it, so I'm not sure on how I feel. It's got like really small font. So, like, it's got Danish, and most of it's, like, conversation. So, I don't know how that'll work out. And then I have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I don't know anything about any of Riley Sager's books. The only thing I know is the new one is, like, a 90s vibe. So is Final Girls. And I know Beth from Beth's All Books, All Booked or something like that. I'll link her channel down below so you guys can check her out if you haven't. But I heard she, that's her favorite book. So I'm hoping that I can like some of Riley Sager's books, but I don't know how that'll work out. I also have one more after these ones. It's Little Secrets by Jennifer Hilliard. This one, I have never heard anything about. The only book that I've heard anything about was, if I can find a little jar of hearts by this author. I've heard so much people say that you need to read Jar of Hearts, but my local library didn't have it, so I picked up this one. I'm hoping it's as good as what they said about the other one, and we'll go from there. Riley Sager blurbed it. Unflinching and unforgettable, everything you want in a thriller, so I guess it's not like a mystery. It is a thriller, so I'm hoping that maybe I'll like this one, even though I know nothing about it. Marin has a perfect life, married to her college sweetheart. She owns a chain of upscale hair salons, and Derek runs his own company. They're admired in their community and are a loving family until their world falls apart the day their son Sebastian is taken. A year later, Mar Marin is a shadow of herself. The FBI search has gone cold. The publicity has faded. She and her husband rarely speak. She hires a private investigator to pick up where the police left off. But instead of finding Sebastian, the PI learns that Derek is having an affair with a younger woman. That discovery sparks Marin back to life. She's lost her son. She's not about to lose her husband, too. Kenzie Lee is the opposite of Marin. She's an art student in her 20s, a barista who dreams of becoming Instagram famous. She's also narrowly broke and behind on her bills with crushing financial obligation obligations, and she's Derek's mistress, with design to be much more. To Marin, Kenzie is another enemy, but she's an enemy with a face, which means this is a problem Marin can fix permanently. So, that just sounds like really good. I don't know about you, but that did sound like engrossing thriller. There's no denying Hiller's page turn and grab you by the throat power. So, this sounds like really, really good. I have a lot of books that I want to read in like a little short amount of time. So, hopefully I can get to some of them. This is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I've heard this one and then Home Before Dark and then Final Girls were the three on the higher end of the scale for Riley Sager's reads. I don't know anything about any of these. So, like I said, I just started Home Before Dark, so I'm hoping I'll know a little bit more about that before I actually know anything about the rest of them. I, act, I have Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubaka. This one I is the other one that I said that I didn't want to know anything about. It is... 350 pages. This one, I am in a psychological group 
thriller thing on Facebook. And this is the one that, like, everybody's like, I could not put it down. I had to keep reading it. I had to finish it till the end. Like, I put all of my duties aside just to read this one. So I'm hoping I'll feel the same way. Like, th that one, Home Before Dark and The Push, are the three that I want to start tonight. Since I already started Home Before Dark, I'm probably going to read maybe 50 to 100 pages of that one more. And then jump into either The Local Woman Missing or The Push. So that I can just have two of the books that I want to read that I'm juggling. And then when I finish one, then I can go on to the other one that I want to read. I have Louis Penny Glass House. All I know is it's a mystery thriller. The lady is from a village. Mystery figures appear. It's set in winter time, like November, December. So I don't know anything about this. I just know it's a mystery. So, and then this is the last library book that I have. I picked it up today. It's A Little Life by Ahanya. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name, I'm so sorry. Because I know I will butcher it, and it will be terrible, so we're not going to do that. It is over 700 and something pages. It's she's thick. It's real thick. In tiny, 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 tiny font. So. But I've heard this book makes you cry. It's about friends. That's literally all I know. So I'm going to try and read this one after I get to the other books that I've been reading because I feel if I try to start like the newer books that I have that I'm never going to finish the ones that I need to turn in soon. So I'm going to start Home Before Dark here after I end this vlog, well the haul, and then I will update you guys hopefully either later tonight after I've started Home Before Dark in the either the local girl missing, local girl missing I should say, I don't know why I keep saying the, but if I start this, and then I will let you guys know how I'm feeling. Or if I just continue to finish Home Before Dark. I'm not sure yet. But I will let you guys know. My husband, or my husband. <laughs> my son thinks it's okay to eat his blanket, so. I, I guess that's how that's going to work with him. But I plan on turning in from Alaska with Love tomorrow. So maybe I might turn in some of these. Like the ones that I'm not too excited about. Depends on how many I finished, but I don't know yet. I will get back to you guys either later tomorrow.